I have spent 45 hours modeling this robotic arm and I want to use this opportunity to talk about the mechanical design because I got some interesting things I want to talk about and I also want to show it off because it's fucking cool. Throughout the video I'm also gonna give you some tips on modeling these huge cat assemblies. This is a 4 degree of freedom robotic arm. The base rotates, these two links rotate and the gripper rotates too. The gripper is actually a pneumatic soft robotic gripper I've been developing for the last 7 videos. But now we're gonna focus on the mechanical design. So this is the first prototype I've been using until now. It obviously looks pretty shitty and it's very small and the workspace is also small. The workspace being the usable space the gripper can occupy. So I wanted to improve all of these things. This brings me to my first tip, which is making things simple. If you have a simple part like this one, it's obviously much easier to modify it or even remake it completely. I tried to make every single part as simple as it can be. The base has this zero motor, which holds this blue link, which rotates. And it has these legs, which are super long. It's pretty fucking big. This is my arm for comparison. This is the mechanism I made for lifting the legs up. So there's this bolt and you can just put it up like that and this will make it more compact. You can basically rotate the legs upside and then lock it with a bolt. This is what the second link looks like. Obviously these motors aren't that strong and this robotic arm is gigantic. I needed something that was rigid but also light. This brings me to my second tip which is high rigidity. To do that, I used a shell feature. This design is very simple. It's quite thick, so there's a lot of mass in here. I've used this shell design to kind of get rid of most of the mass while keeping it rigid. Generally, you want to avoid rod-like features. You want something that's big but hollow. So these hollow structures, these shell-like things are pretty rigid. And that's what I used for my whole robotic arm, basically. Also, you can see that these servo motors have these cases on them. This is pretty useful, so I'm gonna put it onto my Patreon for free. Gives you a pack on the other side of the servo arm, so you have two contact points and you can make higher quality joints. And it also makes it able to mount the Suro from the side instead of these default shitty mounts. I use this for all of the links. And this also brings me to my third tip, which is using calipers when can modeling. So when you start modeling big parts or even small parts, you can get lost in how big or small they are. And you can start making features that are half a millimeter big and you won't be able to make in real life. So what I usually do is when I make a hole that seems to be too small, I take out my physical caliper and check if it's feasible. Even for these links, for example, I check how long they are. So this is like 250 millimeters and I just roughly guesstimated how big that is in reality to make sure I'm not designing something that's too big. Now, this second linkage is just a carbon fiber tube because I wanted to experiment a bit. So I've made this clamp which clamps the tube and there's also clamp on the other side which attaches to another servo motor. It looks awful, it doesn't look good at all. So I've added this shell around it to make it look better. Carbon fiber tube is kind of useless to be honest, but here we are. And this is obviously the last link that holds the gripper. <coughs> it's basically the same as the second link, just smaller. And this is the whole assembly with the pneumatics box, electronics box and the controller. If you haven't seen my previous videos, this electronics box has an Arduino which powers this whole robotic arm. And to distribute the power signals and the electronics, I'm using PCBs from my sponsor PCBWay. PCBWay does PCBs and PCB assembly, so if you don't like soldering, they will solder your PCBs for you and you can save a lot of time on that. They also do CNC machining, injection molding and 3D printing. If you use the link in the description and you are new, you get a $5 discount for your first order. 
so make sure to check them out and thank you PCBA for sponsoring this video. So this gripper is pneumatic, you need to supply it with air, this is the place for the hose and I'm thinking it will go through here into this carbon fiber tube and out the other end and it will attach right to this hole in the pneumatic box. So I think that's pretty cool because it goes through inside of the arm. Also, if you look at this joint, this servo motor in particular, it's going to experience a super high torque. So to offset that, I've decided I'm going to add springs. The spring will go from here and it will attach to here. When you're designing these CAT assemblies that are going to be 3 printed, you have to take that in mind. For example, when I was designing this part, I would like to print this in this position, but then I would have to use support, which adds a lot of time and the part finish isn't great. So I tried to avoid supports at all costs and I decided to print it this side down. Usually I just start modeling the parts and when it gets to a position where I would need to use supports, I just feel something's wrong. This is a skill you develop. I'm pretty sure I haven't used a single support for this whole assembly. The main goal of my new robotic arm was to increase the workspace. With my prototype, the workspace was a huge problem. If I want to pick up something from the ground, let's say an energy drink, I need the robotic arm to be able to reach that position. If I put this joint here, try to rotate this. It can't reach the energy drink and this means it's outside of the workspace. And if you try to reach outside the workspace, this is what happens. So I actually wrote a code to calculate the workspace and by varying the two lengths of these links, I try to maximize it. I, at this point I was about 20 hours in and I was glad I could take a break and write some code. Because when I first started, I set the lengths like this. So this upper link is super long and this one is kind of shorter. And my thought process behind this is that this joint starts up from the ground. So this link should be longer so it can reach to the ground. But when I wrote the code, I realized that it's much better to have these two lengths similar. So the red linkage, that's the robotic arm, and the orange rectangle, that's my desired workspace. So what I did is I look at my assembly. This is kind of the area I want this arm to be able to work inside. So I measured this rectangle and that's the orange rectangle. And the blue stuff, all the blue points, that's the workspace of the robotic arm. So what this code does, it basically generates random angles for the linkage and wherever the linkage ends, like the gripper, it marks that as a blue point. And I did this, I think, a thousand times. So there's a thousand random points which the arm can reach and that way you get the workspace. And I also made this animation so it picks the points at random and shows you how the linkage looks. So you've seen the current workspace and now if I use the link lengths of my previous assembly, the workspace is gonna change. So these are the default link lengths and you can see it's much worse. The arm can't reach uh, half of this rectangle. If you find this interesting, I went over the code on my second channel. And if you want to support this channel, you can download the code from my Patreon and try it yourself. So this is how I figured the link lengths. And the last tip I'm going to give you is to test print things. If you have some parts that are huge, for example, this base and this leg mechanism, I had to redesign that three times instead of printing this whole base. I just printed a small part of it and I tested that out. With this you can save a lot of time and also a lot of plastic. I think this whole arm went through three different iterations. I also got some pretty brutal failures. One of them being this joint. The servo motor weighs quite a lot. So I planned to move that to this joint. I just couldn't see this working nicely so I ditched this this cost me at least eight hours 
I'm also gonna show you the first iterations of this robotic arm, like some of these looked really bad. Tell me what you think about this design, like aesthetically, does it look good? I think it looks pretty fucking sick. I have most of the parts printed, I'm still printing some of the smaller parts. Next video, it's probably gonna be the last in this series, unless this gripper blows up or something. I'm gonna assemble the whole new arm and try to pour energy drinks into a cup.